Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, if you are new here. Today we're going to be chatting about the most exciting murder mysteries that have already come out or are going to come out in 2022. So I noticed that in terms of what people are searching for when they find my channel, a lot of it's murder mysteries. And obviously murder mysteries are my favourite genre. I'm very picky with them. I've only given probably nine murder mysteries five stars, but I love reading them. So I thought I would do a definitive list, not just of my most anticipated releases, which I've already done two videos of, but of the murder mysteries coming out this year that I'm most excited for, that I think you should be most excited for, because I think when you Google, this really pisses me off, but when you Google maybe like murder mystery new releases, it comes out with thriller and mystery lists, right? So not only are you getting thrillers and mysteries, but the mysteries you get aren't necessarily murder mysteries, which is what I want. So I thought this would be of help to people trying to find modern murder mysteries coming out and giving recommendations. Some of these I've already read, some of them I haven't read, but we're going to chat about all of them. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to my channel for lots more murder mystery content. And let's just get straight into it. I'm going to go in order of UK publication. First is one that I just read, and that is A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. So I did a video on a cruise reading murder mysteries set on a cruise. <laughs> My mind, oh, it amazes me sometimes. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the reading experience of reading this on the ship and seeing all the references and callbacks and stuff. I ended up giving this three stars, which I think is perhaps a bit harsh. Maybe it was more of a 3.5. I'm just very picky with murder mysteries and I feel like I'm becoming increasingly picky. It's getting worse. It's not getting better. <laughs> so this is set in 1924. A murder happens and a, a detective from London and a ship's officer are kind of investigating it together. It becomes very drawn up in the art world. There's a lot of uh, people on board who are related to the art world in some way and I really enjoyed the start of this but I felt like the book just didn't go as many places I wish it would go. I want my murder mysteries to have red herrings, to have twists and turns, and this was kind of just a linear storyline. It is a debut though, and so I think that it was a good debut and I would read from this author in the future. If you're looking for a murder mystery with an isolated setting, with a bit of a unique setting, I would 100% recommend this. It's historical, like I said, and I think the writing was good. I think I'm just very picky, and this didn't, didn't have enough happenings to keep me interested, right? It, follows a similar format to Murder on the Orient Express where it's just a lot of interviews, it's a lot of our characters meeting this person and talking to them, meeting this person and talking to them. But I didn't feel like the characters were distinct enough. Like in Murder on the Orient Express I feel like you have lots of different characters who are very distinct and their personalities and their backstories, all of the characters in this were kind of the same, they were just rich white people in the art world, do you know what I mean? So they kind of bled into one another and I just didn't feel like it was done as well as Agatha Christie but then like who? Who does do it as well. Then we have The Maid by Nita Prose. This was a super anticipated release for me. I love the cover of it so much. I was so excited for like, you know, a murder mystery that was pretty prominent, a lot of people pushing it. I gave this four stars. So we're following Molly, who's a maid at this hotel, and this is a kind of a flaw of the book. It's coded as neurodivergent, but never explicitly stated as such, but she kind of struggles with social norms and social etiquette, but she's a very lovely person and has some really good friends at the hotel, but but anyway, a murder happens at the hotel and she is essentially framed for it. She's suspected for it. And it's her and some of her friends trying to solve what has actually happened. I liked the writing in this. I thought it was very, very charming. It smacked of like someone who knew what they were doing, right? Oh my God. I thought this was a classy party. So Anita Prose is an editor. She's previously been a book editor. She's Ruth Ware's book editor. And I could see some similarities and how I liked the writing and how I liked the plot and how I liked the pacing. It wasn't perfect, but it definitely felt like someone who had a bit of authority and wasn't just an, another debut. Do you know what I mean? They have a bit of experience in the field. It had moments of wit, it had moments of lightness, of kind of cozy elements to it, but I felt like it was pretty obvious what was going on the whole time, but it was still an enjoyable read. So I gave it four stars. It wasn't what I was hoping it would be, but I still enjoyed it. This one is definitely pitched and advertised as a murder mystery. It's one of those ones where murders don't happen more towards the end but I will count it as one and that is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. I tell you I've never read a book this fast. I don't have that much of this but the relatives of the thing is to catch up with the things that they're doing because we're going to be second to the third and first to first. 
I really enjoyed it. It was another four star, but it was such a quick read, such a speedy read. It's like 300 pages, I think. Yeah, just about 300 pages. And I flew through it. I was reading like 120 pages an hour or something, which I never really do. So in this, we're following these group of characters who are going to this island to kind of holiday there together. They're very obviously cut off from civilization. Uh, relationships start to fracture and then one person goes missing and another one turns up dead. That's not till kind of towards the end of the book, but it is in the synopsis. So I feel like it's okay to say, cause I knew it going in that that was gonna happen. That's part of the suspense, I think. It's pictures and then there were none retelling. I don't think it really is. And then there were none retelling, which I prefer cause I don't really like and then there were none. People love to compare books to and then there were none, but not deliver. <laughs> But I thought the tropical setting in this was really fun. We had some really interesting character backstories throughout the book. We had kind of flashbacks to the character backstories, but I found them equally interesting. The build intention of them being isolated, cut off from civilization was really interesting. So I'm definitely gonna read more Rachel Hawkins in the future. She's got one coming out. I think another murder mystery. Um, oh my God, is it The Villa? I think it's The Villa. I think it's called The Villa. Very similar cover. I'm liking the route she's going down. So I'm definitely gonna pick that up. I think that comes out in January of next year. Then we have one that I don't actually own, but I'm so excited. I really hope I'm gonna get to it and get, get it soon. And it's The Paradox Hotel by Rob Hart. So this is a very exciting one because it's a sci-fi murder mystery. So it's set at this hotel where you go there to time travel, right? It's kind of like a stepping stone to time travel. And we have this, like, I think she's a manager of the hotel and um, she's kind of in charge of all these different time streams. And then a body turns up dead in one of the rooms, but only she can see it. And it's like glitching in and out of time. And it just sounds so interesting. Also there's something to do with like the American government coming to the hotel because they want to privatize time travel. It just sounds really, really interesting. A very interesting take on murder mysteries. I've heard really good things about it. I do like murder mysteries that bring something new to the table. And I feel like this is like a body that only she can see that's glitching in and out of time is such an interesting idea. I love that. Then we have one, I feel like, I don't know if this technically is a murder mystery, because again, it's one I haven't read, but it is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. So the idea of this is I think nine people get a letter with their names on and other people's names on, and they're like, well, what the fuck? But then those people start getting killed down the list. So it, I would class this as a murder mystery. It's probably thriller murder mystery, but I still think it is one. Peter Swanson, I always put his books on my most anticipated books of the year, because the premises, premises, premise, premise I <laughs> always sound great I'm always really excited to get to them and then they get shit reviews <laughs> but I think I still want to get to this I want to try a Peter Swanson out then we have another one that I've read I think this is the only one I've read so far that I've given five stars and that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley I just have a soft spot for Lucy Foley and I'm not about to apologize for it okay <laughs> this one is a bit of a iffy murder mystery again um, we're following this girl who goes to see her brother in his Paris apartment when she gets there her brother is missing so it's kind of more of a missing person mystery but I would say throughout the book there's a strong possibility that he's dead you're trying to figure out is he alive is he dead what's happening has he even gone missing has he been killed so I would say it is still a murder mystery she's staying in his Paris apartment while trying to figure this out and there's all these kind of characters in the apartment uh, we have the socialite the nice guy, the alcoholic, the girl on the verge, the concierge. So something that I think is very strong about Lucy Foley's books that I love is she always has about five or six characters in the kind of suspect list that you can suspect. And I think that just works so well because it's not too big a cast. So say the guest list, right, for example, which was her other book, it's set on this island where the wedding is happening. So there's like a hundred, I don't know, 150 people maybe at this wedding, but you know that the suspect is gonna be one of our characters. And that's like, that's something you always really know with Lucy Foley. The suspect is gonna be one of your main characters. And they always have kind of an archetype, a kind of, they're, they're, it's like you're playing Cluedo. Lucy Foley really makes me feel like I'm playing Cluedo or like, you know, this game where like you have these suspicious archetypal characters. That's something Agatha Christie, I think, did really well in books like Death in the Nile and Murder on the Orient Express. You kind of have, all these characters with different personality traits that's very identifiable. I think there's some really good twists in this. There's a twist in this, particularly around the halfway mark that literally had me gagged. I was sitting there like, Gagatrandra. I really, really enjoyed it. Now, not everyone loves Lucy Foley, but that's okay. I'm pretty sure all of Lucy Foley's books I'm now gonna give five stars, but let it be known I gave The Hunting Party two stars. I didn't like it, but The Guest List and The Paris Apartment, I just love it. I love her ideas 
and she's one of my favourite authors, I would say. But she still needs to get another five star before she can be officially classed as a favourite author. She's not officially classed as one. Next, we have Like a Sister by Kelly Garrett. This is one where a black reality TV star is found dead the day after her birthday in a playground in the Bronx. The police class it as an accidental overdose, but her sister knows that that is not the case. She knows that that wouldn't have happened to her sister. This just looks really, really fun. Again, it's a short, 300 page murder mystery with a you know modern twist to it set in New York. Sorry by the way if you can hear drilling outside. Someone's drilling and I tried waiting but he hasn't stopped so. <laughs> he was very f***ing rude. <gasps> Won't ya? I've really been enjoying murder mysteries with like a familial twist as well so I think I'm really gonna enjoy this when I get around to it. Next we have one, I've put it here because it's already out in the US but it doesn't come out in the UK till September actually but I've put it here because it technically is already out in the world and I think you can kind of get the ebook if you want it in the UK. And that is Woman in the Library. I have heard so many good things about this, particularly from Mara from Books Like Woe, who's my resident murder mystery recommender. This is by Solari Gentile and I think it's a book within a book. I think it's about a murder mystery writer writing this story set at the Boston Public Library. A scream is heard, the guards rush off to find that the woman has died and these four strangers who are sitting at a table together um, are stuck there whilst this investigation goes on but one of them is the murderer. So the kind of mystery is how has one of them been the murderer whilst not leaving the table? Very very interesting. I've heard so many good things about this. I think it's going to be quite a complex murder mystery but I'm really excited to get to this in September and I, I do love the uh, US cover but I really like the UK cover as well. Sometimes when I love the US cover so much I feel so unlucky that I can't get it but I actually really like the UK cover and I think I'll probably just stick with getting that. Then we have Murder Before Evensong by Reverend Richard Coles. He is a famous reverend here in the UK. It's very similar I think to Richard Osman writing his book. I think that's kind of why this has <laughs> come into existence but I'm not going to complain. It's following a vicar, I believe, in his kind of small English quaint town. One of the members of the church is found dead at the back of the church, stabbed in the neck with a pair of sacketers. <laughs> and um, our main character is trying to investigate what has happened. The text in this is really big. That's really big text. So I think this will be a nice quick read, a cosy setting. I'm really, really excited to get to this one. Then we have Harlem Sunset by Nakizu Afia. This is the sequel to Dead Dead Girls. This is a really good series set in 1920s New York with our kind of unlikely detective. I really enjoyed Dead Dead Girls. I thought it was a really good debut. It could have been improved. The You know, it was a bit obvious towards the end what was happening, but I thought it was a great debut. So I'm very excited to read Harlem Sunset. This is also sapphic as well. And I think that the sapphic relationship is going to play an even bigger part in this sequel so I'm really really excited. And then we have Miss Aldridge Regrets by Louise Hare. So this is another historical murder mystery. You're joking. Not another one? Oh for God's sake I can't honestly I can't stand this. We're following this girl whose life has kind of been falling apart. Um, she's a performer and she gets an offer to perform on this ship. It's another murder mystery set on a ship. Uh, and it comes at the perfect time because a murder has just been committed at the club where she works. So she's like, I need to get away from all this. I need to start living my life. And then a murder happens on the ship and she's like, death is following me. <laughs> so I don't know if this is gonna be a bit of an unreliable narrator where you're starting to think like, is she the murderer somehow? Or I think she's gonna be kind of investigating it um, and being a detective. So yeah, I really like historical historical mysteries and having been on the ship and enjoying that being my favorite part for Fatal Crossing, reading it on the ship, I'm actually very, very excited for this. I have high hopes. The next two are probably the most like mainstream releases that are coming out. We have The Retreat by Sarah Pierce. Obviously The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce was kind of a runaway success last year and this is the sequel to that. The series follows this detective, kind of like Erky Poirot, following different characters each time but she is always there. It's set at this yoga retreat. It's set at this yoga retreat. I can't say retreat. It's set at this yoga retreat. <laughs> One girl dies after falling down some of the cliffs and then another person dies in an accidental drown and our detective starts to think perhaps these deaths aren't as accidental as they seem. I really loved the sanatorium the first part. I think the pacing was great. I think the suspense was great. I think some of the reveals and twists were almost like horror or thriller like with moments that happened that had me gagged but the ending was not good. No that sounds bad guys and forgive me for saying it 
but that's how I felt. The ending was like very, we had a villain speaking their truth and giving their big speech and it became very clear that like, you know, a message that the author wanted to get across with the ending was kind of the whole reason for the book, but it didn't work. It hadn't really been set up, but I'm hoping that the retreat will not have that ending, but will have all the good kind of gags and shocks that the sanatorium had. Next is a very, this is an iffy, this is an iffy one, <laughs> whether it's murder mystery, but I'm gonna class it Miss Ruth Ware, the It Girl is coming out. I am so excited. Ruth Ware is now one of my favorite authors. I can officially say I can rely on her for a great book. So this one, there were a group of friends at university and one of them was murdered. A guy went away for the murder. People are trying to move on with their life. And then a journalist turns up saying, actually, I think that man was innocent. And so our main character is trying to figure out was he innocent? Was my best friend murdered by someone else? I was gonna say this might be more thriller adjacent murder mystery, but One by One by Ruth Ware was a murder mystery. It was a classic murder mystery, but a lot of people didn't like that from her. I loved it, <laughs> but a lot of people didn't like that from her. So I don't know if she's perhaps a bit scared to do it again. I would love for this to be a classic murder mystery, but I, I, with Ruth Ware, because her earlier books are more thrillers, I would say, you don't really know what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna love it either way, but I would love for this to skew more murder mystery, classic murder mystery, like One by One did. And then our last pick is one, I thought I'd throw this on here because I'm certain there must be a murder mystery in here somewhere. This is the Marple anthology, which is coming out more towards the end of the year. When's it coming out? September. Oh, not more towards the end of the year. <laughs> I don't have any murder mysteries after that. So this is a Marple short story collection written by lots of modern authors. So you have Bruce Ware on there, you have Lee Bardugo, you have Lucy Foley. I'm really really excited for this. This is actually one I think I am going to use Book Depository to get the US version which I don't think I've ever done but I much prefer the US edition to the UK edition. That's the US one on top, UK one lower down. Um, the UK one's fine but like the US one I love. I think it's just so pretty. So many of my favourite authors are writing in this and so many authors I've always wanted to try. I've never read a Miss Marple. Um, with Agatha Christie I'm reading the Erky Poirot books in order so I've never read a Miss Marple but this might be where I start. I don't know if that's right. I feel like I have which one is M Miss Marple that I have here? I definitely have one. Is it the 450 from Paddington? Yeah, this is a Marple. So maybe I should just read this and see what I think of it before I read the Marple anthology. Cause I do own one. I, I would like to read the Marple books in order like I'm doing with Ercu Poro. So maybe I'll get Murder at the Vicarage instead. But um, with Poro, I did originally read Murder on the Orient Express before I read any other Poro. So I think perhaps I'll start with this cause it is one of the most iconic Marple ones. And and then go back and read the series in order. So there we have it. That is the most exciting murder mysteries coming out in 2022. Let me know which of these you're most excited for or which ones you've already read. I would love to know your opinions on any of these that you have already read. And yeah, again, make sure you subscribe for more murder mystery content. Thank you so much for watching. If you got into the end of the video, comment the knife emoji or any other murder tool of your choice <laughs> emoji down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.